Alright, so that finished. That took it about three minutes to do 421 frames, which is pretty damn fast. If you look at this, we can really see how rock solid this track is. It's just following your facial, facial curves very, very well. Um, you know, there's a little bit of play here, but nothing really to worry about. Just a little movement. Also, you'll notice there's no keyframes anywhere. Like, it can go to my keyframe search, and there's no keyframes. It'll just go to the in and outs. Um, so what Mocha does is it doesn't set up keyframes. Um, it, it sets up your track, and it doesn't do any kind of keyframes at all. For that, uh, the keyframes are all in the adjustments, so if I turn on auto key and say I want this to just be up a little bit, you'll notice this green little star looking thing is a, uh, is a keyframe, and here I want to bring this back down. If I turn off auto key and move this, nothing's going to be, it won't let me move this if I'm not on a keyframe. So if I'm on the keyframe, I already have a keyframe there, and uh, you know, move this wherever. But uh, I'm going to just go up and step back through all these. Well, I'm going to show you uh, some of these view controls. Um, turn off RGB just shows the specific face. It'll just show the spline. Um, we've got no alpha, so it doesn't show us that. Uh, we've got our proxies, which we don't have a proxy really, but Mocha will proxy for us. Um, and, you know, we've got all these different views that we can see, and these are just different uh, pre-built-in, these grids, uh, really for just showing the surface. Their logo, which is, you know, a shameless plug for them, but, you know, if you need to do a test track, especially for the corner pin, just tossing their logo is very good. And here we can see their alpha be turned on and off. I'll go back to our Mocha Roto. No, uh, no proxy. Um, match will uh, show us our mats. If we had multiple mats, this would show all of them. Um, select mat will just show the current mat we're working on. Track mats, um, this will be anything that's tracking. Um, if I turn mats on, you can either colorize it or not. And colorize will give us this red outline of where our track is. And the default will just show us an alpha channel where everything uh, outside of our, our mat. Um, our uh, Let's see if we go colorize. Oh, uh, this background. None. You can do the Mocha Roto. Go logo. You know, you can toss in a bunch of different stuff. I mean, you know, at, at this point, there's no real time for that, but you can see where you might want to, uh, want to do that. Um, you can turn off your overlays, which will turn off your spline. You can just see whatever you're working with. Um, you can turn off everything but the selected layer you're working on. Uh, turn off your tangents, which are your uh, your handles. Uh, turn off your splines. I like working without my splines sometimes and just my handles if you're trying to catch your edge. But it's important to turn on your splines every once in a while and make sure that everything's still in inside your your area. Um, let's see. You have uh, your surface, which is essentially your four-point corner pin. This won't be in motor. Uh, you have a grid, and this this grid is really cool. If you want to see what your track is doing, it'll uh, it applies the grid to your track, and you can kind of see how it's following everything. And uh, you can adjust your grid size. Um, I'm gonna turn off my grid for right now, and I'm gonna turn off my mats. Um, so say we're in here and we want to add another point. So what you'd want to do. So you can go up here to this point insertion tool, and you can just click on your spline, and bam, you've got a new point. You, know, you can do this as many times as you want. Um, all right, so now with our basic track done, we can go in several different ways. Um, I'm just going to go and start to track uh, a couple points on our face. Just do another uh, mask on our face we kind of get started on where we're going to pick up in the next tutorial. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down Z key. I'm just going to zoom into her face. And uh, we'll find a drop we want to start on. I'll do this drop on her eye. 
and the whole point of what we're going to be doing is bringing out each drop and we're going to bring it in and bring the footage back into After Effects and use the the roto work we've done here to uh, recolorize all the drops and make them really pop and uh, do some other stuff. Um, so for right now I'm just going to go through and make our first one. Um, doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, what we're, our goal is to do is to make these drops look, you know, tight and realistic. But uh, you don't have to be perfect with them. You just have to make them look, you know, pretty decent. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, um, you can either name this or leave it as layer 4, or whatever you want to name it. I'm going to turn off tracking. So what that means is I can't track this layer. It won't allow me. If I track forward, and I have multiple layers that need tracking, it'll track them all at one time. Um, so I could also turn off tracking for this layer now. Yeah. And uh, this layer will no longer track. The track will still be applied to it, but it won't track again. Um, that's something to be, be aware of, that it will try to track again if you let it. Um, so, over in here, in this layer properties, where it says, Link splines to track. I'm going to say face track and this will adjust this will parent essentially this little uh, roto work that we have to the space part and it immediately grabs the tracking data and as you can see it's not perfect I mean it's a different section of her face and since her face isn't flat um, and we could break this down into different tracks but this is just rough um, you're gonna need to we're gonna need to adjust this a little bit so I'm going to turn on auto key and I'm just going to go through select all these points just by dragging over them. You can also do this point by point but since the shape of the drop itself doesn't change we don't have to uh, adjust each point. Go up here bring this down um, and like I said um, here's the point point in time where you might want to hide your splines if you're trying to kind of get in here and really define what you're looking at. Then we kind of go down, move this down a little bit. Alright, now if we look at this, hit colorize, and I'm just going to go selected mats. Now we can really kind of see where it's going very easily. Uh, you don't really have to do this, this is just me. I'm um, just kind of going through and watching it. And it looks pretty good. Um, so the next one we're going to do is this one right here. So once again, I'm going to grab my X-Spline tool. And I'm going to create another X-Spline right around this drop. Once again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm going to select them all and pull on this tangent handle. As you can see, they all move together. And uh, that's because I have them all selected. You know, I can pull one at a time, it doesn't really matter. Um, so turn auto keying off and I'll delete this keyframe. So you can see if auto keying is on, it's going to create a keyframe, assuming that all these are different. Once again, I'm going to turn tracking off and I'll link this to our face track. And you know, you can see this one's just off a little bit, but not by much. So select all these, turn auto key back on. Bring this in. And I mean, one thing to be cautious of when rotoscoping is you really don't want to keyframe very much. You want to keyframe as little as possible. And Mocha is really good at doing most of the work for you with this track. And it seems a little low. Alright, so we seem to be pretty good right now. One thing we can do once zoomed in here is uh, soften these. So I'm going to turn auto key off first off. Select all these points and where it says edge properties, we can go to edge width and I'm just going to exaggerate this. I'm going to make this 10 pixels and go set. And what this just did in theory, hmm, let's see if we turn on Uber key, this will do. Like I said, you know, it's the learning program, so there we go. Uh, what UberKey does is, like I said earlier, adjust all the keyframes across all parameters equally. Um, so, in order to adjust these keyframes that I have, 
I had to um, go in and tell it to use Uber key to adjust that. So what edge width does is essentially your feather. So I'm going to zoom in, and our feather now, uh, in between here and here, is, is it'll all be rotated, but it'll alpha it down, it'll, you know, uh, feather off, just like any feathering tool. I'm also going to turn the Uber key back on. I'm going to set my edge width back to zero. Set. This will tighten it back down. Just realize your key is still on, so it's important to be careful of uh, your Uber key because if you adjust one thing, you might accidentally adjust everything. So just be careful to turn it on and off, and use it sparingly. You don't want to use it all the time. Um, so now that I've got this kind of done to where I want it to be done, and what I'm going to do now is render it out. So I'm going to go up to File and Render, and uh, it gives me a couple options clip to export. Uh, if I want to do, I'm just going to do the mats for right now. Um, and it's important, I really don't want to export um, my face track. This will just export a gigantic white blob where face is. I just want to export these two drops. So I'm going to just check these two. And you know, it gives you your frames to do, image sequence or quick time movie. I'm just going to do an image sequence. I'll hit next. So ask me where I want to save it to. And I'll just Tell it Mocha. I'll create a new folder that says exports. I'll say choose, and then uh, prefix Mocha Roto, and then we'll just add numbers in there. Index start, index width. Um, this is you know where it'll start. Frame zero. Index width will how many digits it'll go into if you have a lot. And extension dot jpeg is what we want. And I'll just hit finish and off it'll go. And it goes pretty quick once you've gotten your tracking data done. And I, you know, I don't have too much too much done here. Um, so that's it for now as this roto's out. And uh, hopefully I'll see you next time. And uh, we'll do some more informational tutorials about especially integrating with After Effects and really going in and utilizing all your tools. And then I'll probably go into some basic tracking stuff. And we'll... Uh, We'll go from there. Hope to see you back. Thanks.